Hi, it's Valerie from Shale Brook Handcrafted Soap in Mosa River, Nova Scotia. I'm doing an experiment today on uh, two pounds of hot processed soap, probably medium to high temperature. I'm going to be doing it in my crock pot on warm. And I'm going to be using something called Aquafaba, which is uh, A Q U A F A B A, Aquafaba, which is the water or the juice off of chickpeas. Um, other, you can use other liquid off of other beans or peas, but um, one of the and, you, and I know I'm going to be asked, well, why would you do that? And because I can, because it's fun, because it's nice to use all kinds of things in creation to see what you can get. But this liquid is protein, and granted, you might not get too much of that on your skin, or if it's even effective that way. But it has saponins in it. And uh, you might be more familiar with soap wort, um, which has lots of saponins in it as well. And actually, the root of that was used back through history for soap, for washing. But saponins bring um, like a foaming, a foaming agent sort of type thing. And uh, I'm hoping that that will show up in the soap today. I'm not sure how it's going to be. It's the first time I've done it. I'm going to show it on camera. Uh, these are from chickpeas. And I believe vegans um, use this liquid and instead of pouring it down the drain. They'll use that liquid to make mayonnaise, to make meringue, to bake with it, to make cookies, put it on the pies, make desserts, make puddings. Um, I think you can even make like uh, something for your kids to play in that's non-toxic. And supposedly that's really silky, that stuff. And you can put colorants in it. I'm going to be making today what some people would consider an all-natural soap. Um, so I wanted to show you that I've drained the liquid off my chickpeas and I've got mulberry silk in it. And one thing I was really surprised with, it's quite like gelatinous. Uh, I'm just going to hold that up. I don't know, maybe my husband can put the camera down to look in it. Can you see that, honey? Okay, so you can see the color that it is. I'm not sure what color that lye is going to turn when uh, I add the lye, oh, what color that's going to turn when I add the lye to it. And I'll show you that when I do it. This is just basically an introduction again. And um, so I'm going to put the formula up for this and how much I used. And uh, I'm going to also be adding honey and sugar with kombucha, ginger kombucha, my homemade kombucha that my husband makes, and or kombucha, however you want to say it. So uh, it's going to be an interesting soap, and I'm hoping that this liquid will uh, show up in maybe like the lather that I already get, uh, that it'll be like double. Who knows? Uh, it's going to be exciting to find out. And I'm hoping that I'm going to see some silkiness with this, because I think this very possibly will provide some incredible silkiness to the soap. Thinking now I should have left the mulberry silk out, and I would have known better. And um, I've been asked to make, I've been asked by customers of mine, do you have any eucalyptus soap? Do you have any eucalyptus soap? And I do have it in a blend, uh, but they've been asking me for just eucalyptus. So today I'm adding eucalyptus essential oil to that. Uh, and um, we'll see how this is going to turn out. And I'm just going to do a natural batter, and then I'm going to add um, a swirl in it with uh, rosemary powder spinach powder and some kale and green clay. So we'll see you in a few minutes. So remember when you're making soap because of the lye and the danger with that to wear safety gear. Important stuff. So um, I'm getting ready here to add the lye to the aquafaba. So there's 7.2 ounces uh, of aquafaba which is chickpea water and one ounce of aloe vera juice. And it's the first time I've done this, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. But it looks to me like it's turning quite orange there on the bottom. Quite interesting, it, um, there we go. So I guess you can see that. I'll just hold it up anyway. Oh, too far. Quite orange. And I'm going to stir that up. <clears throat> I usually like stirring my lye like this for about a minute. Goes pretty fast. And I'll show you me pouring it into that uh, 
into my heated oils, which were about, I think they're about 165. My crock pot is on warm. The lye is going to be a bit hotter. I wanted to tell you that I'm also doing this at 35% uh, liquid instead of 38. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but I also have marumaru butter in this and uh, camellia seed oil. I'm going to super fat this at a total of 8% with 5% up front and 3% afterwards. And I'm going to be using uh, perillia and argan, bakuri butter, and apricot. And you can super fat with whatever you like. And, and how you like. This is a, a low drying soap, very low stripping and higher conditioning. Okay, I'm going to check the temperature on that. I imagine that's pretty high. Okay, that's about 198. Okay, and I'm going to shut that camera off because uh, I want my lye a little bit lower than that. And I'll be back. My lye liquid is now 180 Fahrenheit. My oils are 170 Fahrenheit. And I'm going to pour this lye in there. We're going to see what that, uh, how this will turn the batter. But I just made a lemon juice soap yesterday or the day before that. And uh, that was bright orange. The batter was yellow, uh, light yellow. I'm not sure what color this will be. And I'm just gonna bring that to a thick trace. And I've got one ounce of coconut milk. I have, I have three ounces of coconut milk. I'm adding one ounce now and two ounces after the cook. And I'm gonna bring that to a medium thick trace and I'll bring you back when something starts to happen to it. As you can see, this is uh, actually a very thick trace, um, but it's a light color. It didn't stay the color of that lye liquid from the chickpeas. And I was a little concerned there first. Uh, there was quite a smell coming off that lye liquid, but there's nothing now. It just smells like hot processed soap. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this cook and when there's some activity with the batter, uh, so you can see that's very thick trace there. Uh, beautiful color. I think that's nice considering the oils and butters that I'm using there. And um, I just wanted to say that you can cook your soap however you like. The higher the temperature, it doesn't make it better and it doesn't make it looser. What makes it a good soap is your formula if it's uh, and the ingredients that you add, your additives, that can make a good soap too, but your formula plays a big, the best, biggest part of it. And we'll see you. So I wanted to show you that this is uh, rising up now into a volcano. You can stir that down, you can whisk it down. I usually use a whisk, but lately I've been just using the stick blender. Just brings it back together faster. So my crock pot is still on warm. And I'm just, what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to stick blend that. Oh, we'll see how this looks. But I'm just going to stick blend it up. There were, that's applesauce stage now. And uh, a bit of uncooked stuff there. And I'm just going to stick blend that back together. So I stick blend that down and within probably 20 seconds it's rising again. This is a two pound 
soap. So I feel pretty safe that it's not going to go over the edges there. But when you're doing soap at high temperatures, you always, always, always want to be watching your crock pot. The other thing that is a really good tip to have is uh, a warm spray bottle because you can spray down your sides with that. Just a couple of quick sprays, very fine mist. And that can stop you from having dry pieces of hot processed soap on the side. So some really good tips. I know most of you that uh, are subscribers already know this, but for those that this may be the first time you've seen one of my videos, a really good, uh, some really good tips that you can use to help keep your batter moister and more manageable. Oh, I just want to mention that you can see that that is uh, potato stage there. So I'm just going to be letting that set now until I until it goes to Vaseline. And I'm just going to spray it like I had told you before. So just a couple of quick sprays and um, with warm water. So that's one of the tips to help keeping your batter so you don't get dry pieces. The other thing is whether you cook it on low temperature, high temperature, medium temperatures, whether it's in the microwave, in the oven, on the stovetop, or uh, such high temperatures that you don't even need a crock, that uh, saving some of the liquid for after the cook and adding it hot is very beneficial to getting a more manageable batter. You won't always have pourable batter or liquidy batter, but you should always have pretty manageable batter, and that does depend on your formula as well. The other thing is I always add a tablespoon of plain yogurt Super fatted between 2 and 5 percent normally, and I add that at room temperature. Uh, yogurt, actually, when it's heated, uh, from what I've read, some of that will convert to sodium lactate, which enables your soap uh, to be more manageable as well. I add that after the cook at room temperature, and then I use sodium lactate at 3 to 5 percent. Sodium lactate is a great hardener in soaps, but the thing about sodium lactate that's beneficial is it's so good for your skin. It's a humectant and great for aging skin. And that can also help to make the soap more manageable. So I add between three to five percent of the weight of my oils. And I add it warm after the cook. So I do have additives going in here today, which would be uh, sugar and kombucha, kombucha, some ginger kombucha. I'm just gonna open this up right now because I see that getting high around that spoon. So you can see it's starting to rise again. I still have my crock pot on warm. And I'm just gonna take the temperature of that. And that is about 215, 216. And uh, I stir when I take the temperature because temperature guns only take the surface temperature. So to get a true temperature, that's what I do. And uh, that actually is almost all. I'm just going to tip that up. You could probably see in there. That is almost all Vaseline stage. And I'm going to turn my crock pot off. And I'm just going to let the, I'm going to unplug it. I'll just let it sit in this actually until I go to add my additives. Uh, so I've got the tablespoon of sugar per pound of soap and I mix it with a tablespoon of liquid. And I have a heaping tablespoon of honey per pound of soap. And uh, Valerie Holdren also uses a lot of honey, I think, or for her experiment in that, because she broke the boundary, I think, of what would be considered normal. And uh, you, can, you can add so many things, but you do have to be careful. You can't just add without reason. I believe as well, but that was such a good experiment she did, and I, I thank you, Valerie, for that. So I'm going to be adding a heaping tablespoon of honey per pound, and I'll add that after the temperature of the batter is under 175 Fahrenheit, because I want to keep the properties of the honey this time. Plus, if you add honey at too high a temperature, you will scorch it. I know, because I've done it, and uh, it will turn the soap a brown but also give it a beautiful like creme brulee smell. So if you want that type of thing, you can scorch your honey. But I don't want to do that uh, this time. And uh, so I'll bring you back when I add the rest of that stuff. Thank you. It's been one minute and this soap is now all Vaseline stage. And you can tell that because it's not opaque. It has that uh, Vaseline type look. 
a shiny look. And I'm going to add my uh, sugar and my ginger kombucha that I mixed it with. And I'm also going to add my super fat, which you can see here is very dark because of the bakuri butter. And those were in a pan of hot water on my stove so that they kept warm and they're added hot. So I'm going to stir this up and I'm going to cover this back up and watch the temperature on this before I add my yogurt and my sodium lactate and my coconut milk and I'll bring you back then. I'm getting ready now to add my uh, two tablespoons of yogurt at room temperature. You want to make sure that you always mix the yogurt in really well. You don't want it to cook in pieces. Then I'm adding my sodium lactate, which was warmed up. And I have my two ounces of coconut milk heating up in hot water on the stove as well. And then uh, after I add the uh, coconut milk, because these temperatures uh, of the soap is still over 175, I'm going to wait a little bit before I add the honey. And the other thing I wanted to tell you was I did a zap test on this. You can do a pH. I think it's always important to check that. You never know when you forget stuff. Sometimes you get busy and uh, there's no lye left in this. It's all cooked out. It's all saponified. So considering that's 35% uh, liquid, the batter is pretty, pretty smooth manageable. Now I'm going to add the coconut milk. I'm adding that hot. Um, when adding milks, I personally believe that it's very important to you stir them well. You don't want those to cook on the bottom. Especially if you're, uh, if you're still in the uh, electronic element of your crock. Or if your crock is on. So you want to make sure you stir that in really well. This is actually pretty thick. Thicker than I want it, but 35% liquid. We'll see how it goes after it sets a bit there before I add the honey. It mightn't be conducive to what I'm, the design I'm doing, but we'll see. I plan to put this into two one pound mini molds that I got from Steph's Micah's and they're heating up in my Breville toaster oven at uh, 150 Fahrenheit. I find that uh, hot process soaps do much better if you can heat your container that you're going to use. I've done them without heating them. I just find it better for individual modes is the best actually. So I'll bring you back when I do the honey. The temperature right now is down about 169 and I'm going to add my honey which is warmed up on the stove and that's warmed up with the kombucha. You can just use water. You can use any liquid you like to dissolve it in, but dissolving the honey or watering it down a bit helps it to incorporate into that thick batter really well. I just wanted you to see the honey and then I'm going to get this ready to design and when I'm ready to design I'm going to bring you back and show you how I'm going to design this. Hi, so I divvied up my batter and which will eventually end up two of these four cup plastic containers. These have been heated up with hot water. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out about a cup and a half of that. to make my accent color. And the batter is very thick. I might even pop it in the microwave to heat it up a bit after. So I just want an accent color in there. Let's see how we doing. And I'm just gonna spray that top so it doesn't get 
dried. And I think I'm going to pop that in the microwave for about, I don't know, 15 seconds probably. This is my rosemary, spinach, and green clay, kale and clay. And I'm just going to use uh, half of that. Probably I think I took too much out. But this is just to make an accent color. It's a pretty nice color. I don't know if you can see that in there. Yep. So this is really thick. We'll see how this design turns out. And I'm just going to put that kale and clay back over by the stove so it can keep warm. And I am going to um, just give that spray, cover it over, and uh, I'm going to heat these up in the microwave and get my mold out. Sometimes heating them up in the microwave for a very short period of time can help to make them uh, a little bit more liquidy. So I'm going to get one of my molds out. And, uh, so this is nice and warm. I'm going to put it, set it up in this after I'm done so the bows, uh, so the sides don't bow out from the hot process soap. That's why I have this mold here. Loosen it up a tiny bit, not a lot. But we'll see how this goes. Sometimes you don't get to pick and choose. Sometimes it's really lovely and loose, and sometimes it's thicker. The main thing is to make great soap for the skin. So now what I'm going to do with this, my plan is sort of like an in-the-pot swirl. So I'm just going to use this container. Actually, I'm going to... I'm not going to do nothing with that. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. So you can see me in there. I want to make sure that you can see me. Yeah, all right. I'm just going to inter just interchange them. So one on top of the other. I guess it's not too bad. Definitely swirled a lot thicker soaps. That kind of looks the color of beans. <laughs> I'm, or chickpeas, actually. I'm hoping that it doesn't stay that color, but if it does, it's no big deal. I knew it wasn't going to be white. not thick dry it's more like thick moist <laughs> all right let's see what's going to happen with this I'm just going to pound that down to get some of the air bubbles out and um, let me see what am I going to what spoon am I going to use and I'm just going to uh, flip it up a couple of times like you would in, in the pot swirl And this one here, I'm just going to hold sort of like on an angle and pour it in. And just let it fall where it may. I guess that's not going to work either. Too thick. All right. So basically, I'm going to set those down. Do a little curly cue on the top, put them in the fridge. I'll do a lather test after, and I'll post some pictures of the cut on the video as well. Thank you kindly for joining me today for Aquafaba Hot Process Soap. Bye-bye.
So this is the uh, lather test from that uh, aqua saba liquid from the chickpea. And uh, man, this batter got hard real quick. So uh, just checking this out. I certainly got a lot of foam in the crock pot, but uh, remains to be seen how this is going to be. Lather's up good, but is it better than my other soaps? The lather's really thick. As you can see right there, it is uh, it's lathering up nice. I certainly have lots of it. I guess it's going to remain to be seen how it acts in a couple of weeks or even a month with that lather, but uh, I'm not disappointed with it. And uh, the batter is a bit dark, but that could be from the Bakuri butter and the Murumuru butter. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, what do you think? I don't know. That looks pretty good to me. It is. Uh, the bubbles are nice and close on it. I guess I'll have to check it out in my tub when it gets all nice and hard. So there's lots of it and uh, it feels lovely. Um, is that from the silk I added or is that from the aquafaba chickpea water? But as you can see there, it's uh, certainly no problem lathering up. So I hope you get an opportunity to try that aquafaba and maybe look what else you can do too, make meringue with it or all kinds of stuff. There you go and I'll post pics. Thank you. So it's uh, been just uh, about 24 hours since I made that uh, aquafaba soap with chickpea juice with eucalyptus essential oil and I'm checking the lather again because uh, it's Neat to see what 24 hours may bring to the liquid. It's going to get, uh, although you could use cold water, I suppose. The, I do believe now that the aquafaba, the chickpea juice, adds to the ladder, to the lather a lot. But it's also the feel, I believe, it adds to, aside from that I use mulberry silk. But the lather is very dense, but very, um, very silky feeling. And um, it adds up really fast, as you can see on that uh, camera. So all in all, I'm exceptionally pleased with how this turned out. Um, very beautiful. Indeed, and I can see where I would definitely use it again. That's how I feel about it. Now, the rosemary powder uh, definitely is a bit scratchy. I'm not a fan of exfoliating soaps. I like them to be smooth, but I do have people that really love them. Um, the eucalyptus is lovely in it. So, all in all, from uh, my opinion of this, of using... Chickpea aquafaba is awesome. Uh, as you can see from this right here, whoops, lost some. It is really dense. Like, beautiful. The thing about it that's very noticeable, my personal opinion, your formula will play a part too, is the feel of that. And it is very silky. Thank you.